Welcome to Faith Talk with Jefferson Baptist Virtual. My name is Brendan. I'm the pastor of Jefferson Baptist Church. I'm glad you're here, uh, whether you're watching on YouTube or just listening. Uh, it's, it's good to be with you. So what are we going to be talking about today? Well, today we're going to be answering uh, the question that was sent in by someone in the congregation. Uh, the question has kind of two parts. The first part is, why are there two accounts of man and woman being created in Genesis chapters 1 and 2? And then the second part of the question is, is there a timeline issue with these accounts? And of course, uh, Faith Talk is where we answer questions directly from the Bible. So if you have your Bible, or even if you don't, let's talk. two-part question we are working through today is, again, why are there two accounts of man and woman being created in Genesis chapters 1 and 2? And then the second part is, is there a timeline issue with these two accounts? So why are there two accounts of man and woman being created in Genesis chapters 1 and 2? We'll start with that. So the first thing, uh, before we even get started, that I, I'm going to say at, at the beginning of most of these faith talks is that if you have your Bible Make sure you go there and read through uh, the passages that we're going to be working on uh, before you uh, listen to the faith talk. So that way you just kind of know what we're doing and, and where we're going. So I would read chapters 1 and 2 of Genesis before you continue. Uh, because as much as I would love to, I'm not going to read all of Genesis chapters 1 and 2 before answering this question. So... Uh, kids, if you are near your parents and you want them to read you Genesis chapters 1 and 2, that would be a great thing to do, Mom and Dad, before we keep going. So, we're going to focus on a few different passages here in Genesis to answer this question. Uh, the first is in Genesis 1, and we'll focus on verse 26 through 31, and then in Genesis chapter 2, we'll read verse 4 through 9, and then verses 15 through 25. So, starting with Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 31, we read this. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, Everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. So this is the first account of man's creation we find in Genesis. And basically what we're looking at in this context is the cosmological um, creation account, which means that here in Genesis, as Moses is writing it, we are seeing the big picture account of Genesis, where God created the whole cosmos, the created order or universe uh, from nothing. So this is when God speaks, let there be, and it is. Um, you may have heard the words uh, ex nihilo, uh, meaning out of nothing, and that's kind of what we're looking at here in Genesis chapter 1. This means that the creation of man and woman then took place within the seven days of creation. They were created on the sixth day along with the rest of the land-dwelling animals. And so God created them uniquely to reflect his image and likeness. In other words, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through chapter 2, verse 3, is the bird's eye view of the seven days of creation when the whole universe uh, was uh, spoken into existence, which obviously man fits into that. But then Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 25, or the second creation account, gets down to earth. 
that focuses in specifically on humanity and how God created them uniquely as his image bearers and the way uh, that he had relationship with them as well is found in Genesis chapter 2. And so we move from the universe perspective down to really a down-to-earth perspective or a, or a um, bird's eye view to maybe a narrow view or what some people say is a nearsighted view or myopic is the word, you know. So anyway, so we move from big to focused perspective in Genesis, which is why there's these two accounts. And so in this second account, we get a close-up of how God uh, created man and woman totally unique in their uh, genders for the specific purpose of achieving the promised blessing of dominion in the world through being fruitful and multiplying. And we get this close-up of God's relationship with mankind because it really sets the stage for the rest of of the Bible, uh, the story of redemption and God seeking to save humanity, which chose to ruin a perfect relationship with him. We don't see that relationship break in chapter 2 of Genesis, but it happens very quickly in Genesis chapter 3. And so what do we see in this uh, second creation account? Well, let's read it in verse, we're going to read verses 4 through 9 of chapter 2 of Genesis and then verses 15 through 25. So we read this in verse 4 through 9. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth in the heavens, when no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. And a mist was going up from the land, and was watering the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, And there he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then in verse 15 through 25 we read this, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. Man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. And so, basically, in this second account, we get to see God intimately involved with the creation of both man and and woman, and how He gave them stipulations in the covenant, gave him a, in a covenant where He spoke His word to Adam, and. Um, Eve was supposed to be a helper to help him achieve all that was part of that covenant. And so that's why we have two different creation accounts. Now, the second part of the question is, is there a timeline issue with the two accounts? I personally don't think there is a timeline issue. Um, All of what's described in Genesis 2 is really consistent with the big picture view of creation in Genesis chapter 1. If God created plants... On the third day, then animals, man and woman on the sixth day, it doesn't seem to me that any of Genesis 2 contradicts that creation flow. All of what happens in Genesis 2 could also have easily been accomplished on the sixth day of creation. And so if you haven't figured it out yet, I am uh, pretty much a literal six-day creation approach guy. And so, anyways, uh, let's wrap this question up. Um, So there are two accounts of man's 
uh, creation in Genesis. The first account gives the big picture of God creating the universe, which man fits into on the sixth day. And the second account does not contradict the first. It simply gives a close-up story of man and woman. And the reason for this is because from Genesis to all the way until Revelation, which is the end of the Bible, we find the story of God seeking to build an intimate relationship with humanity. So with that being said, I hope that uh, this talk has been helpful. Uh, if it generated more questions for you, make sure to send them into the email in the descriptions below. And feel free to leave uh, comments and like the video for us. And if you haven't subscribed to Jefferson Baptist Virtual yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And may God bless you until we talk next time on Faith Talk.